Welcome back everyone. You find us in exactly the same spot as we left you last week, in a beautiful national park in Finland. Now we're desperately hoping we'll see some wildlife, but what I'm hoping we won't see is any more little peckers like we unfortunately did last week. But I can't wait for what we're doing today. We're about to hike through this frozen forest to stay in a wooden cabin in the middle of the wilderness for the night. I am so excited. Yeah, so excited. So it's not that I mind the hike and it's not that I mind staying in the cabin in the woods. Tell the people the truth. That is absolute rubbish. You've been giving me jip about both of those things. Well, we've got a camper van like, and we're in the woods, so I don't really know the difference, to be honest. But one of my favourite things to do is annoy Jess at night because I don't really like sleep and I can't sleep sometimes. So, yeah, annoying Jess sort of like sends me to sleep sometimes. And if there's other people with this cabin and we're in our own sleeping bags, how am I going to do that? Honestly, he is an absolute nightmare. I nearly, I could have punched him in the face last night. It was driving me mental. Should we tell you my three favourite things? Oh, three of my favourite things to do is dig her in the ribs because she hates that one. Put my cold feet on her. She hates that one too. And then you love a cupcake as well, don't you? He's <laughs> just a freaking nightmare. So I tell you what, even though this is a proper dream of mine, if we get to this cabin and there's other people there, for the sake of their souls, I think we're going to have to walk back to the van in the dark to save them from him. Yes! <laughs> How cool is this little cabin? I think we might be a bit cold in this one though. Well, we're all going on a snowy holiday this is the snowiest place i've ever been i'll tell you what is going to be interesting though since we've been here the coldest we've had it at night is 19 degrees and we even wake up then sometimes and go oh it's a bit fresh we're that bad right that i've even said to him should we see if we can set the afterburner up on our phones so we can turn the temperature up before we have to get up and go to the loo <laughs> so it's going to be interesting what the cabin's going to be like so the information about this trail says that sometimes you need snowshoes to do it. Fortunately, the bit we're walking on is pretty compacted. But let me show you what it's like if you step off the trail. <laughs> so one of the main reasons that I wanted to visit Finland was to see this landscape, because it seems to be iconic of Finnish Lapland. But what I'd love to know is, why does the snow stick so much here? Is it that it's not very windy? Is there something special about the snow or the trees? I don't know. If you know, can you tell me? Because I find it fascinating. She's flapping a bit. The old clouds are coming in and we can't see where we're going, so she's flapping. It's like a whiteout, honestly. All you can see is like little cauliflower trees and barely see the little poles. Look, this is all we've got to guide us. You wanted to come, woman. <laughs> I think some of you have noticed as well, look. Look at Jess walking along there. All nice and empty. Look at the camel pack. So welcome to our cosy little home for the night. Come and take a look inside. So outside we've got a lovely little porch and then an entry hall so you can dust off all the snow. So we've got a nice big table, beds behind us, although we haven't brought mats, and a lovely big log burning stove. And then in this corner we've got a gas burning stove, even got a spare gas bottle. A bit more luxury than you might think. One thing I'm not so keen on though, is I nearly always need a wee in the night. And this looks a bit fresh. Now look at this for a wood store. So they've got all these logs piled up. They give you a wood saw and an ax as well. So then you can chop all your own wood and then once you're finished, you can fill it up for the next person. And then there's this lovely undercover hut with a big old fireplace. And they've even got toasting sticks. How cool is that? So that's enough of the tour anyway, because we need to get the fire on. Skills are a bit better than last week. Moment of truth. Well, fortunately, that's worked out better than last time. Well, it's an hour and a half later, but we're not going to go cold tonight. 
Well, I tell you what, I thought the Aussies had it good with their free barbecues, but this is next level. Like, if this was England or Scotland, isn't it? you'd pay like hundreds of pounds for this, yeah. isn't it? And they're all over Finland and Sweden as well. And there's even ones you can do like multi-day hikes to and stay in a different hut every night. It's just incredible. But I think sometimes we like go backwards in life rather than forwards, because I think living like this would probably be more enjoyable sometimes, yeah. eh? Woo! But on that, <laughs> I think it's time for a bit more of John's cookbooks. Oh, Jesus. So I best uh, go into the wilderness and rustle us up some food. Don't worry, sweet cheeks. I'll get us a feast. But if I'm not back in a few hours, the wolves have had me. You're going to feast well tonight, girl. Beef or chicken? Now you might think pot noodles are easy to make, but you need some top tips to go with them as well. Now you can use normal water, but snow water just gives it that little bit more extra kick. Now my next and last tip, and not a lot of people know about it, but it might seem a bit crazy, but honestly, just trust me. What you gotta do, is you gotta pour the water in, and you fill it up to the line, and then once you've done that, honestly, trust me, just put the lid back over. Game changer. I'll tell you what, boy. That is a beautiful pot noodle. You know how to spoil a girl, don't you? Oh no, I have to get the ladies, I do. You right? Is there one of these for that? I was going to give him a wink, give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for you. She's just gone to the toilet. So I think you know what's coming. Well, I did check the weather before we left, and it said that there was a little bit of snow forecast. But I've just been to the loo, and I can't see our footprints from earlier anymore. So let's just hope there's not too much more to come. Otherwise, John really might have to go searching for food. We've had the fire running for a couple of hours now, and it is lovely and toasty in here. It's not made it any comfier, though. <laughs> Tell you what, this is one form of wood you don't want in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would prefer some softer wood uh, <laughs> to but sleep with. It is definitely going to be the most uncomfortable sleep we've ever had, isn't it? It's a little bit over dramatic. See, all this cabin like, oh, we come to stay in this beautiful cabin. Oh, it's lovely. It's not. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> I've slept on tiled floors at friends' houses before. This oh, is luxury life. Yeah, that's only when you're spewing your guts up when you've had two beers. <laughs> that's all that is. It wasn't. I was younger. But anyway. Well, uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. Probably feeling about 10 years older as well. Rise and shine, John. Rise and shine. No, thank you. I'll just stay here. Well, good morning, everybody. That definitely wasn't the comfiest sleep I've ever had, but it's definitely one we'll never forget. But before we go, got to restock the log pile. So we'd best put these beauty old girls to work. Another day in the office. Well, I have to say, that was probably one of the best things we've ever done, eh? It was absolutely brilliant, and it makes me very happy to hear you say that, Johnny Boy. But one thing I would say to take if you go in is a blow up oh! mattress. <laughs> Just ended up knee deep in snow, hang on. <laughs> what we were saying was, few things to bring. Definitely bring camping mattresses. Also, you're gonna to wanna to bring hot chocolate. Don't know why we didn't do that. Oh, now I've lost the path. Hot chocolate. And definitely make sure you bring some candles because a torch is good, but candles are just way better. We jokingly said on the way here, what happens if it snows overnight and we can't see the path back? 
and I said that that's all right, we got the drone, we can always put the drone up to see where we're going. But I'll show you now the quality of the drone footage that I got this morning. I was hoping to get some real good shots, but it's literally just like a white out here. So let's hope we can get back. I'll tell you what this is perfect conditions for though, a naked reverse snow angel. I'm joking, you're not getting that lucky. Well, we made it, home sweet home. But first, I need a brew before we hit the road. Well, it's 24 hours later, because when we saw that nice, comfy mattress, I don't think we could resist <laughs> having a little kip. I did make my cup of tea, and we did hit the road, but only for a couple of hours, because staying in that cabin definitely took it out of us. But when we woke up this morning, we woke up to glorious sunshine. And I knew when we were coming up here that I might struggle with the short days, but I wasn't prepared for the dark days. So when you wake up and it's sunny in the morning and the snow is glistening, you just cannot beat it. And talking about sun as well, I thought I'd uh, speak to you about our solar and our battery setup. So the solar, I'm so glad we didn't go for more because it's pretty much non-existent out here. Because even when you do get sun, it's that low in the sky, you hardly get anything off it anyway. And then if it's not that, it's either all snowy or it's all icy. So yeah, it's pretty much useless. But the 200 amps of lithium we've got has been brilliant, isn't yeah. it? Because obviously we're doing quite big drives, so it's always charging when we're driving along. And we've only really dropped down to about 40%. At its lowest. Yeah, so like, I'm not gonna say I recommend 200 amps of lithium because recommending how much battery you need is almost like saying how much fuel do you need in a week well yeah, it depends it, on your car yeah. depends where you drive do you go up hills yeah everyone's kind of different so but just to let you know that 200 amps of lithium is definitely doable I tell you what, I've never seen this before when filling up. They've put the freezing point of the diesel on the sticker on the pump. Well, this was the best thing I ever bought with us anyway. So Jess has just popped in the shop, but um, I thought I'd show you something. So yesterday, obviously it was mild and it was snowing, but it's turned back down to minus 20 today. And that means that all the snow has just turned into ice. So if you look up there, look, so you see our spotlights there, all the snow has just turned to solid ice. And then on the front of the cab here, where it's come down there, it's all ice all the way down, real thick. And then also there's a bloke that come apart next to me and his car, he's just been trying to scrape his car off because it's literally all the snow has gone to solid ice. Look at this bloke, minus 20, snow everywhere. Oh yeah, I'll do a delivery on my bike. Off his head. We got another one, look. What is that with these finish? Check out this dude, look. The old joyriders are out, boys. And the old joyriders are out. Look at her, look. In her element. I'll tell you what, lads, if she ever leaves me, just know, the way to her up, food. We've made it to Sari Selka, the most northern ski resort in Europe. But we're not here to ski, we're here to sled. And after John's last mishap at a ski resort, we thought we'd better bring in a specialist to supervise. Meet Alex, a hardcore extreme sledder. Let me show you some of his work. <laughs> now he assures me that he has a wealth of experience and knows exactly what he's doing. Ah! 
I'm definitely going to need some help for this one. Luckily, I've got another Jess on hand. How do we break? There is, there is no, no brakes. Oh, it could have been a maybe better experience. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, girl. <laughs> well, once again, this is brilliant. Absolute blast. And it costs 39 euros each for a two hour ski pass and your rental included as well. But it took us 50 minutes then just to get down for one run. So, but it's brilliant. But as you can see from Jess's face, you get covered in a bit of snow. <laughs> Time for round two. to be having an ice shower. What another brilliant day, eh? This is incredible. So like the last one, you went fast in a straight line, but then you had to stop at the corners because otherwise you'd die. But you enjoyed the beautiful scene. This one, beautiful scene at the top, but then you bang it down. It's uh, pure adrenaline. Oh, and you can drift around the corners. And I'll tell you what, Jess is getting pretty good at the drifting yeah. too, yeah. So speaking of which, watch me drift it, boy. <laughs> well I may or may not I've got a little bit overconfident with my drifting abilities there but did you notice the save? That was flat out. That was absolutely brilliant. Oh, I loved it. I tell you what, I was well impressed how quick you went down there. I thought you was all mimmy pimmy down yeah. there. Flat stick girl. I mean, it, <laughs> well, I'm good because our time's run out. That was an absolute blast. But hey, no broken people. So a lucky charm and the old pro do us proud. <laughs>
Morning everybody. We have some intruders in the camp this morning. Some lovely little reindeer just wandering about outside the window. Yeah, it was the first time we've actually seen reindeer from the van. In fact, <laughs> any wildlife from the van. So. Yeah, late wildlife has been a bit lacking on this yeah. trip, hasn't it? They might be a bit cold. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, yesterday was an absolute blast, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I love days like yesterday. And like we said before, it's almost like days like that that you think uh, we wish we had kids, eh? Yeah. But if you've got kids, that place, you've got to go. Like it was so much better than the other one in that it was Safer, protected, yeah. But and it was faster. <laughs> unbelievably fast, but uh, yeah, so you've got to take your kids there. In fact, if you've got kids, send them over it yeah. and we'll take them there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But we did want to say a huge thanks to Jess and Alex because we had so much fun with them yesterday. And if you want to see any more Arctic antics, those guys have just started a YouTube channel. So go and check out Alva and Norman. Yeah, there'll be plenty of mature content over there, <laughs> I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, if you're wondering how we got shots like yesterday, I thought I'd do another little behind the scenes. So I'll come and show you what we use. So for days like yesterday, really you need an action camera and we love the GoPros. So we use the Hero 11 Blacks and the main reason we use them is because they're robust and we've tested that on more than one occasion. She's still good, she's still good. Also, they're really easy to use. They're quite cheap for what they are, and they've got brilliant stabilization, so even when they shake a little bit, you normally get a good shot. Brilliant for focus, they're waterproof. They're just a, a brilliant all-round camera. The cons are they're terrible in low light, and also the audio isn't great either. Now we love them that much, we run two of them. And the main reason we do is for days like yesterday. So if you notice, Jess had a chest strap on and she was getting one like that and I had the stick and it just means we can get better clips and we can try and show you more exactly what we're doing. Now, this is our day-to-day go-to vlogging camera because like I say, it was so easy. It looks a bit of a state, but I'll explain. So obviously we run the light on the top just for when it's dark, we can brighten it up a little bit, and then we run the media mod on it. And basically all that means is we can then connect an external mic to it as well. So then when we're vlogging, we can just use it like that, but also if we want to get further away shots, or it's a bit windy, or there's people about as well, we can just put it on there, and then we get good audio like that. We also run a Voltra stick on it as well, which is this bit here, which is like four batteries in one, so then we can go the whole day without charging it. Now we do run another camera as well, like a mirrorless camera, which I'll get Jess to explain that next week. But if you want a really hardy, easy camera to use, then I really recommend the GoPros. So this morning's activity is a little bit more relaxed. We've come to the Siddha Sami Museum just outside Inari. And the museum tells the story of the Sami people, who are the indigenous people of Lapland, alongside exhibits about the natural environment here. Traditionally, families moved to different locations for different seasons and had rights to specific areas which were respected by other families. This evolved into Siddha, the Sami reindeer herding community. I am absolutely fascinated by this community and their ability to thrive in such an inhospitable climate. The Sami mantra is, to survive in nature, you mustn't be too hasty. And we have definitely learnt that being here too. Nature does her thing and you just have to roll with the punches. The Sami way of life was hugely impacted by the settlement of the North and World War II. And the open air part of this museum shows Sami life past settlement. It includes storage huts on poles to protect them from animals, wooden cooking huts and traditional homesteads. So if you're coming up here, it's definitely worth a look. So I think one of my favourite things about doing YouTube is when we film these bits, I actually learn a little bit because normally when we go through the museum, I just like look at stuff and walk away. <laughs> so it just actually teaches me a lot as well, don't you? Yeah, and normally I do try and tell him, but he just blanks me, but yeah. he has to listen to it over and over <laughs> and over again when we edit, but anyway. We're going to leave you guys there. Thanks so much for coming along on this adventure with us. And this is actually going to be the furthest north that we're going to make it. So from here, it's south. Yeah, I did want to finish on another naked scene, but the general said no more. So. <laughs> I think we've had enough nudity for a while. <laughs> but make sure you come back next week, because even though we're heading south, the adventures don't stop here.